to be automatic. Watch, watch the finish now. You see the speed of it. That's a great drive. Yeah, there's, that's. Well, I'm not going to hit another one off of that. <laughs> Very good. Thank you. Well done. Thank you. Okay. Right, hello everybody, welcome down to Matt Fryer Golf and I'm down at Port Stewart Golf Club and just behind me is one of the legends of the game, Mr. Gary Player himself. So today, PXG have invited me down to watch a clinic and see if we can pick up some information about the PXG clubs and also some tips to help you improve your game. So let's hear what this great, great player has to say about how to improve your golf. Guys, as well, if you are new to the channel, do remember, hit the subscribe button down below, follow me on all my social medias, and do go and give the guys at PXG a follow also to see loads of great content from Gary himself and also throughout different things from the Open this week. So let's get stuck into that clinic now. If I had to choose between this club and my wife, I'd miss her. <laughs> I'm get myself this is a true story. I'm playing in, in Texas, in, in Kentucky in America, and I win the tournament three times in a row. So now I go to the press, <laughs> the guy says to me, you should be driving the ball better. What's, what do you like about your driver? I said, well, the grip this, the kick point is here. I've got it set with a slight draw, it's flatter, etc. And I said, I did say that, I said, and there are 40 press guys here. If I had to choose between this club and my wife, I'd miss her. The next day, it's headlines in the paper. <laughs> so I go to the gym and I come back and my wife hiding in the cupboard and I walk in the bedroom and there's my driver on the bed with a negligee. A negligee. You chop this out. Go back. You turn your shoulder, look how the clap didn't go out, didn't go there, it didn't go there. Watch when I turn my shoulder, watch. See that? Came on the inside. Now, there, now, watch what happens. You move your weight forward, look where the club's dropping to, watch. Go back, watch that. Drops to the inside. You get this kind of swing, there, which, 50% of golfers do. They all hit. Once you go on the outside, you've had it. So that's why you turn. You turn the left shoulder, you're on the inside. You move that forward, your club drops to the inside. And then you feel, you get a feeling. Now I'm getting complicated, which I didn't want to do. I'm giving you paralysis of analysis. <laughs> now from there, you move forward, your clubs drop to the inside. So you feel as though you're hitting the inside of the ball. When you get there, you do that, you're hitting the outside of the ball. That's when you hook and slice both times. I very seldom, I never play with a weekend golfer who keeps his head still with his body, never. And I've told you what to do now and you will not be able to do it. You will not be able to do it. See this little chip here? Yeah. You see how the high one. So what you've done now, you've, your hands have done the complete opposite. And that's what you've got to do is you've got to train yourself there's a method in how you practice. And it, if you, it's like when I'm practicing at a tournament, I don't stand there and hit to that 100 yard marker with a driver. I'll hit out there, because then I'm practicing lining up. Then I'll go to extreme left, the 125, because you're practicing your lineup as well, not just hitting a ball. So you've got to vary it. Now, sometimes you're on the edge of the green, you hit this little shot here. See that? When you've got rough here, when you've got rough, you've got a tough lie, just hit it in the gut with this, like a, just like a putter. You don't hit any hard, any harder. So all these little shots that are stroke savers, but the one thing about this shot, hitting a high shot, you've got everybody, you don't hit it high unless you have to. You hit it high, it makes you cry. You hit it low, it makes the dirt. Whenever you have a choice, hit it on the ground, take a putter, hit it on the ground. Don't hit it high unless you have to. But when you're hitting it high, watch the little bit of acceleration there. See, it's a little high shot, but you see the acceleration and the divot. Everybody goes. Facing through, getting them to use their legs to start the yes. downswing. Well, that's a very valid question. 
uh, and the thing is this that they all hang back so badly that you've got to initially get them going across but you see if you watch Rory McElroy and I'll do this I'll just show you one more bunker shot I actually just wanted to ask that question I'm very, pleased you, I'm I'm very pleased you did I'm very pleased you did but this is a minor way a minor way of answering watch watch how my club finishes the shot watch see that I I very seldom ever use a 56 in a bunker I mean a, a 60 give me that that uh, 56 in or give me the give me this the 50, 50. yeah now this club here I'm gonna come back to your 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 question in a minute I just wanted to finish this bunker shot at a very I loved your question there now you watch this is now this is now a 50 degree loft as against 60 so now I don't have to hit as hard I hit just nice and softly and look at that ball every time it gets to the hole the 60 is danger I think I won the best bunker player seven times in my career and that's all we had that's all we had never had more loft than that and I played it way better when I use a 60. A 60 is for hitting over bunkers, but watch, watch how easy I hit this. See how easy I hit that? Look at these two, look at those two shots, look at those two. Beat all those 60s. Go ahead. If you were, you know, for amateur golfers, what would be one best tip for an amateur golfer to improve the game? To move his weight to the left when he plays golf, as he starts his downs and get his weight to his left side. Yeah. And the other th thing is, to see his putter when he puts to, to pick a dimple on the ball and to see your putter hit that dimple before you look up perfect they thank can't you. do that they no they, they'll be peeping all the time <laughs> so some really fantastic advice there from mr player and what i loved about listening to him talk about the golf swing and playing different shots whether it was the driver the irons out of the bunker or even just chipping Everything was so simple and this is coming from a guy who has won multiple majors and what he was talking about was just trying to keep it as simple as possible. Using your weight shift, actually getting into your lead side and turning into a balanced finish. And then also with the putter, just that little tip of trying to keep a focus point on the ball, not searching for the ball and I think we are all guilty of that sometimes. We're eager to see if that putter's dropped so we turn and start dragging the putter in a different direction. And then also with the weight transfer as he was talking about, not getting into the shot, not committing to it, we try and help it up and lean back and cause real indifference in the, um, the strike of the golf ball as where this simple thought of a nice balance follow through turning in and holding that finish I think you know one of the comments he said was just pose for the camera watch the ball down and pose for the camera each time so if we could take that and try and apply it you know if this guy who's like I say a multiple major winner and done that throughout his career and he said to me you know I had a couple of um, words with him he said I've always tried to keep it simple amateurs are trying to do too much don't ruin your golf swings by overdoing them just turn use your weight a little bit and, and get your mind a little bit clutter free if we can do that hopefully you can start playing some better golf so take those tips guys see if you can start to a you know use that weight shift and turn into a better finish focus on the ball pick a spot on the uh, on the golf ball that you're going to focus with and i also like the tip that he said about the bunker play um, using your wrists a little bit more and a bit of speed and conviction in your bunker shots instead of having the the sort of lackadaisical not really committed to it and then not letting the club get through the sand because it's going too slow and it snags it up see that you're actually committed use the wrist set the wrist so you claim care so you're actually creating some leverage earlier on and then you can use that speed down and get some conviction in the shots also don't be too quick as well was one of the things to uh, to jump to your highest loft out of the bunkers like he said during the uh, clinic tours he would use a seven iron a three iron quite a lot and then when he got down to his 56 or 50 it became very easy for him then he would literally find it a doddle just to get his 56 out and whip it out of the bunker because he practiced with something a little bit tougher a little bit harder and made him actually work and get a bit of feel in his hands so some fantastic tips there and it was a, a real treat to hear him talk and um, I can't thank the guys at PXG enough for inviting me down and being able to share some words of wisdom from such a such a legend of the game so take those tips guys see if you can apply them to your game and hopefully we should see that the scores are starting to come down um, 
If you haven't already as well, guys, do remember to follow the channel, click it down below, subscribe, loads more content coming in the future. Also follow me on my social medias and follow the guys at um, PXG on their social medias for loads of other open stuff at the moment. But thanks for watching this video. It's been a pleasure and I'll see you soon in the next one.